lovely. Okay. Um, my name is, as already said, very loudly, um, Michael Lopp. I'm the VP of Engineering at Slack. I've written a couple books, Managing Humans, Geek. I have this leadership Slack you should go to, not because I'm running it, because there's 4,000 people there, literally, talking about leadership all the time. So there's two things that you need to know. There's a Slack you should go to that's about leadership. And there's a slide about 7 in. that's the other big thing. But I'm not going to tell you what that is. Enough about me. Let's talk about you. Um, how many of you have been managing for 10 years or more? OK. Uh, let's do three to seven years. Ooh, sweet spot. OK. And then uh, one to three years. OK. I guess that is 25%. Your math is adding up. Um, and how many are like, what the fuck, I'm a manager, holy crap, I'm screwed, like, <laughs> I just I didn't put any, like, data on that, it could have been any of you, right? <laughs> um, okay, well, that's, uh, that's interesting. Um, how many of you are extroverts? Right. Introverts, raise your hands. What? Well, good job, everybody, I know that was hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's, uh, that's good news. All right, let's, um, let's, uh, let's go back and way back machine a little bit. Um, you have, uh, you're all managers or about to be managers. I need you to change your perspective a little bit. Whether you've been doing it for uh, 10 years, 20 years, if you're just starting, the mindset that I want to put you in is, I think this is the same slide from last time I did this, but it's a totally different talk. The mindset I want to put you in is you are now a manager. Congratulations, you're a manager. You got that promo uh, promotion, you got that new role. <laughs> you got that new gig, and you're there. And it's like, you feel like you progressed. You were here, and now you're a manager. So congratulations. Congratulations on the new role. I have bad news. <laughs> I will now explain for the next 20 or 30 minutes how your good intentions and well-trained instincts are going to erode your credibility, uh, stunt the growth of your team, and re reinforce the theory that these manager types are power-hungry jerks, working with all the authority, not all the information, and woefully completely yeah. It's going to be a rough 20 or 30 minutes, which is why we started with that John Wick tune. Um, yeah. This is, this is a cautionary tale. This is a cautionary tale full of hard-earned advice because everything that I might talk about, some of them are like, no way, no human being would ever do that thing. I've done like three times. <laughs> three times, like I didn't learn the first two times. The third time I'm like, well, this is really a bad idea. I probably shouldn't do it. So the opening talk for the keynote is the new manager desk. <laughs> I like that nervous laugh. You should be nervous. <laughs> it's going to be a rough 20 or 30 minutes. <clears throat> so, here's the deal. This is the worst case scenario. What I have done is I've constructed a series of decisions and choices and a situation into a worst case scenario. Chances are you would never do all of these things at the same time or in this sequence but it's here to prove a point of what happens when each of these parts, these decisions, these things happen, and you do the worst possible thing, okay? So, it's a synthesized version of a bunch of different stories. It combines all of the meat, all of your mistakes, and it starts right after you go, congratulations, it starts with this affirmation that you tell yourself. You tell yourself, you don't tell anyone this, which is, do it, I'm the boss. All rolls up to me. I am now responsible for the things, all of the things, they are mine. I'm going to do this. I'm the boss, the boss right in that. <laughs> so, what do you do? You do what you did as an IC. You want to make a good first impression, so you sign up for all of the things. Hey, Rod, can you do this? Yeah, I can do this. Hey, Julia, can you do this? I'm on it, no problem. 
you're trying to do something very honorable. You're trying to do something very sensible, which is prove yourself. You sign up for all the things. You work late. You do your very best to kick ass and make a good first impression. You sign up for all the things. This is an approach that worked well for you, as I see. Can you do it? Of course I can. Thing is, you are now signing yourself up as well as your entire team. This is the beginning of the spiral because you didn't just say, I can do it all, I'm the boss. What you actually said, what you did say, what you actually thought was, I can do it all myself because I'm the boss. This is your first failure mode. The thing is, as an IC, you have this wonderful, cool gig. You have complete visibility in what you're doing. You have total ownership because it's your thing. It's your keyboard. Don't touch my stuff. I'm working on the thing. And it worked well as an contributor. You are instinctively reluctant to delegate your work because it re represents this unfamiliar loss of power. I'm going to give you the thing and trust you, you're gonna do the right thing with it. Oh, like I'm gonna be judged on this. So you don't naturally do this. You don't naturally give away your toys. <laughs> Compounding your poor judgment is your belief that you're the best person to do all of this because you've always been the best person to do this stuff because it was just you. And you were no longer the best person. Your problem is that your enthusiastic effort to prove yourself you signed up to do far too many things. And it is, again, fundamentally different work because it's the work of the team and not just you. This leads to your very first failure mode. The quality of your work drops because you signed up to do many, too many things. You lack the time to correctly complete it, miss deadlines, drop commitments, half completed work passed off as done. I've done that. And you start to discover a couple of awkward situations. First lesson your job is no longer to get things done. That's part of the job. Your job is to get things done at scale get many things done at the same time, and that means pulling in your team. If you were doing everything right, the moment that you send stuff, a little bit overloaded, you would ask for help. But you're not going to do that, because, where are we? We're on the new manager desktop. You're not going to ask for help. It gets worse. So I remember what you said in your head. I can do it all myself. I'm in control. I'm in the box. The spiral starts to pick up a little speed right now because you have this moment where you walk up to someone and you're like, hey, Craig, how are we doing on that thing? And in his eyes, you can see that trust has been lowered. He's suddenly a little bit nervous, like, I think it's okay. You can see the glimmer of your failures in their eyes. And you got a little nervous because you've seen that before as an IC, but now you're a manager. <clears throat> so you update your mantra. Okay, I get it, I get it, I'm failing, I'm a little bit overloaded. I can do it all myself, I'm in control, because I'm the boss. Again, I'm gonna say this like three more times. Worst case scenario, you do everything wrong in this. So, what you do, because you're bad at delegation, you've signed up for too many things, is you start to not delegate, you start to fake delegate. You're like, hey Susan, I need you to do this small project. And you don't actually give her all of the context because you're bad at delegation. You don't give her full control or full context. They don't need it, right? You're the boss. You'll give it to them when you need to. You tell them what you think they need to know, but not everything. And just like you, worst case scenario, same scenario occurs. They either start to fail because they don't feel they have authority to change the course of the work or the project, or they understand the context of what winning looks like, they, or maybe they had it pointed in the wrong direction from day one, and they do the right thing. They do the right thing. Remember, you're not doing anything right in this scenario, but they do. <laughs> they say, hey, what? Brands, whatever your name is. They tell you, that, hey, hey, sorry, 
Um, we don't. We were really confused by this. They say, "Listen, we would like a little. We would like a little bit more context." So they tell you. I think we're off by one of the speaker notes. Go ahead. Thank you. And this is when it gets really painful. If it's not already painful for you, I can see people grimacing in the audience right now. Oh, it's rough. This is where it gets painful. Remember, every possible decision sits together. So they say, uh, we didn't understand the course in the project, which was important, so we started over here, which in hindsight was clearly the wrong place. Um, you think, you think, but do not say. It's obviously the wrong place to start. If I were running this project, we wouldn't be in this situation. Speaker notes, again. Just click, please. Speaker notes, thank you. So, you think this, but you don't say it. You're internally frustrated. You're like, ah. I wish they were doing better on this thing. I, 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 I know I could have done better on it. It's obviously a wrong place to start. But you're, and you're right. But you're so wrong. You're right in that if your hand were hands-on working on this project, your prior experience would have likely improved execution. But you're wrong because the strategy of building trust through successful delegation is one of the greatest accelerants to the new manager, new manager death spiral. Not building delegation and trust is what really gets this thing moving. So again, saying I can do it all myself, I'm in control because I am the boss. You don't want to appear weak. You don't want to update your priorities. You don't want to change your strategy because that's somehow a mission of weakness and you're the boss. You give the bearers the corrective advice and you tell them something that you probably never ever said Again, worst case scenario, you say, go figure it out, balance. <laughs> you would never say this. You would never ever say this. There are lots of ways to say this without saying these words. To be threatening, to give people this sort of the idea that there's consequence that you know, but they don't. Your team leaves this interaction with the following impression. They're failing, true, you're mad, inflexible, unwilling to listen to their opinions, and this is the point in the spiral where they stop talking to you and they start talking to each other. This is the slide that is the most important slide in the deck. This is what I know after managing and building a lot of managers, the inflection point between being an IC and a manager is this. Do one on one, there's a million other 40, 50 hacks you have to do. This is what I know that a manager understand his or her job. Your job is to aggressively delegate. There is work out there that you are guaranteed to get an A on. You can manage and get done. And of course, they've never done it before, so when they do that work, they're gonna get a B. And if B is killing it for a first time try, and if B is actually better than the center, because you give them the work, and they get to learn. They understand, oh, I've been doing this before, and I got the B, and that's pretty good, right? You get to see the B, and then coach them to an A. Well, by the way, it was a B. Here is why. This is how to actually get to an A. More trust. But the thing about this is when you delegate something big, and scary that you're both in agreement is currently beyond their means. It's this boat of confidence. You're demonstrating trust in these people. We're gonna figure this out, whatever this project is, that's scary and big and large you've never done before, together. But you don't do this, because like you're on this death spiral thing. <laughs> Such good advice, I wish I took it at the time. So what do they do? They do the same thing that you did, is they fail. You're not listening, so the team starts to talk to each other and other teams. They're not talking to you because you're mad and threatening. They are trying to self-correct, and sometimes they do, but since it's the death spiral, they don't, so they fail. 
This is unfortunate because they all had the data to you, they, they had the data to be successful, and what they needed from you, the leader, was the nudge. Hey, this is a little 30 degrees over that way, or don't start there, start over here. You didn't share that because you weren't communicating well. So the project becomes a failure. Getting super bad now. Getting to the bottom. <laughs> it's getting to the bottom, and then I'll bring it back up, okay? Super bad now. This is, this is when you're going to know you're going to bottom out. Everyone's demoralized. Everyone feels like they failed, including you. But since no one is truly communicating well, all sorts of opinions start to become facts. You tell yourself a story, you might not have the right people, so maybe I'll shuffle on the team, so I'll shuffle them around and get a better outcome, which leaks out and people start to lose their mind because there's a reorg, which is just you thinking. They think they fail because you didn't give them context because you were busy withholding information, being proud, and not listening. By the way, if you're worried about politics, in this scenario, this is a cesspool of politics. This is where politics gets created, where people divide into little factions that aren't communicating. It's a nightmare scenario, and it gets a little bit worse. Congratulations. <clears throat> Speaking of this, congratulations. Through this deft combination of poor communication, crap judgment, and systematic demoralization of the team, you and your team have failed at the task at hand, but you've also irreparably harmed your relationship with your, maybe your peers and your team, and your credibility is hurting really bad, but when you know it's awful, when you know you've hit rock bottom on the new manager death spiral, is when someone comes to you that you trust, and they say, hey, Lop, horrible, toxic thing, whatever that is. Someone that you trust says, this is the meme about you or the project, and it could not feel, it could not be more untrue, and it punches you in the gut, it slaps you in the face, and you're like, that's just not, that's not, I don't even understand where that came from. It's a bad, toxic thing. And you quietly tell yourself the following statement. This isn't me. How in the world did like this scenario like come to truth? Like, how can they say that thing about me? This thing that this is awful. It's designed to like make me feel bad. It's designed and it's untrue. You're right. It's not really who you are. What you are right now is precisely the opposite of a leader. All right. <laughs> Teacup pig timeout. Everyone take a deep breath. Relax. <laughs> I got a teacup pig chaser. <laughs> all right, so that one's better than the first one. Good, all right. I have just described, obviously, a very personal thing for me because I've been through it before. When you've received, like, oh my god, that's awful. And it is, again, all of the things that are constructed to like make it a worst case scenario. <sighs> Management is not a promotion. Anyone who thinks this is a promotion is woefully incorrect. It's not a promotion. One of the things I have done at Slack with many of the wonderful people in the room here, because how many Slack employees are here? I should probably ask that now. Slack folks? All right with like six of the people in here, is we have, a, of course, landed there early on, built a management track. And of course, because there's this management track, and we're saying, this is the management track, Evan goes, well, we should be over on that. Start leading all these engineers to being managers, which is lovely, because it is a different role, and it helps us scale, and some of these folks will be amazing managers, but some of these folks will not be good managers, and they need to have that sense of progression a sense of how I'm going to develop as a leader without doing all of this people stuff that I may or may not be equipped to do. So we build a leadership path, which is the IC path, which has all of the same pomp and circumstance and a chance to opportunity for folks to grow. These are equally important paths. Because if you create one path, everyone's going to think that's the path 
towards promotion. You are promoted when you are successful at your current job. It's equal parts recognition and reward in many companies. The expectation is you're performing at a higher level for a period of time before you actually get there. If you're going into management for the first time, you are effectively starting over. It's a restart. Management is a career restart. Now, you know the company, the terms, the culture, and all those sorts of things, but you're moving to the other side of the brain. It's a completely different set of skills. The curse of the Silicon Valley relative to engineering is that we have spent way too much time highlighting this management thing and not enough time highlighting the leadership thing because folks just jump into management and we lose some amazing folks who could be great leaders but maybe not good managers. The death spiral is not real. It's unrealistic and deliberate construction. It is unlikely that you perform each of the steps in the spiral. It is equally likely that you nodded your head. I was just talking, and I can confirm that many of, you, many of you were nodding your heads and grimacing as I was talking. Yep, I did that. Whether you performed one or all of the steps, the lessons are the same. And they are the same lessons I wish someone had given me when I was first starting. There are three. This is a powerful, powerful thing. Let others change your mind. There are many more of them than you. It stands to reason their network is collectively larger than yours. It stands to reason they have more information. Listen to that information and let others change your perspective and your decisions. Cal Henderson is a CTO at Slack, and he's a little bit scary. Um, he's kind of British, he's very smart, he's one of the founders, and he's uh, guarded, I think is the thing I would describe there. Amazing partner in crime there. But the thing that I really appreciate about Cal is when you walk in, we had this meeting a couple of weeks ago. Oh, Cal also has strong opinions about things. Um, when he, we came into a meeting, my senior staff meeting, and someone was presenting something that I was pretty sure was contrary to what Cal believed. So what did he do? He let the person present, and then he peppered them with questions. What about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And this person had prepared, because they knew this is kind of the game that was played there. And when he was done, when he was done peppering this person with questions, Cal said, and this is how you know that you've changed his perspective, he says, that's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> I'm like, fuck yeah, that's great. <laughs> it's kind of awesome, because he is so strongly opinionated. But when you have passed the test of this is a reasoned, uh, defensible argument, he tells you, yes, I've changed my opinion. Now, that's different than a lot of leaders who feel I have to dig in. But what did he do? He listened. He updated his priors, and he built trust. OK, here, I was wrong. He didn't say I was wrong. That'd be hard. Um, <laughs> but you'd update his priors. You want to show, to demonstrate to your team that when you receive information, that you can update your priors and change your mind. Augment your obvious and non-obvious weaknesses with a diverse team. You are bad at something. Do you know what it is? Well, not bad. Let's, let's keep it positive. You have areas of growth. <laughs> Do you know what those are? If you don't and you're a leader, go ask a friend, maybe someone at work, and say, what am I bad at? And it's like, hey, flop. You are so amazing at like the first 30% and the inspiration and when you go to this thing. But when the work actually gets done, you get bored instantly. So you, Lop, need to be paired with great execution humans because they help that middle part where you're like, this is boring. I can already see the ending, which is three months away. So I am paired with execution folks because I like the front. I like the design piece. I also like the ending piece because it's kind of like the opposite of the design piece. A diverse team is not, there's a social justice thing, which is very, very true. It's, it's choosing the path of least resistance to build a team full of humans who agree with you. And by the way, you're wired to do this because it's comfort, it's safety to have people say, why well, yes, that's a great idea. Ideas do not get better with agreement. Ideas gather their strength with healthy discord. 
and that means finding and hiring a set of humans with the widest spread of perspective and experience and to build a safe place to debate. I'm arguing for more tension on the team. I'm arguing for arguments where it's a little bit charged, but that's okay because you're building things for other humans probably. And the more humans that you have informing and debating your decisions, the better your ideas are going to be. This is not easy. Most teams, I would argue, hire people that are like them because we are biologically wired to do that. And you need to inject chaos into the system to make sure that you're finding and attracting and building these diverse teams. Whew. And this is the one. I know I already said this, but it's the most important part, I think. You need to figure out how to delegate more than is comfortable. Though I have a very capable, don't tell them. Don't tell the Slack people this. <laughs> As he streams it on YouTube. <laughs> I have a very capable leadership team. I have a very capable. I am, the reason I am so happy is I am partnered with an amazing CTO, and my team is capable. And what do I mean by that? That means 99% of the things that come to me, I'm like, oh, this is a big, scary, huge thing. I feel absolutely confident I can, I can hand it to someone, anyone on the team. That is the first time in my career that I've had that like, confidence in the entire team. You need to build that confidence in giving folks other things. And that means giving up your toys, giving that thing that's like, oh my god, I can totally crush this. It's a culture people thing. That's my jam. Let me just like do this thing. Put me in the game. Oh, I, I really should give this to someone who's going to get a B on it. But we're going to build trust. We're going to get it done. And we're going to build each other as we do it. This is the thing I want you to think about. The role of management is already set up with a tremendous amount of pre-existing potential angst. You are their boss. You gauge their performance. You set their comp. That is an intimidating set of responsibilities. It's a powerful set of responsibilities. The burden is on you to prove that you deserve those responsibilities. You weren't given them. You have to earn them even after congratulations have happened, even after you're already in the role. And you do that by building trust, by listening, by over-communicating all the time, delegating, giving feedback, receiving feedback. It's a long list. There are books on this topic. But this is what you're working on. This is the thing that you're doing. Teams? that trust each other, I bet you know what this feels like. I bet you've had a team that was high trust. You know everybody on the team. You know their names. You know what they're good at. You know what they're bad at. And you trust that they have your back. You trust that they're going to tell you what's going on. These are highly effective, high velocity teams. High trust teams get shit done in a way other teams that are like, well, uh, we, uh, should we check that with the person? And I'll talk with Bob, and I'll get back to you, as opposed to, like, it's for Bob. I'm out of here. He's best at that sort of thing. When you're every action as a manager, this is another thing that's not in the slides, but I'm going to go on, is being scrutinized in a way that you are underestimating. Every word that you say, every action is percolating and amplified out into the system. So what you need to do is look at each action that you're taking and ask, and ask, think, theorize, reflect, am I building or eroding trust with this action? If the answer is yes, I am building trust, you can avoid the new manager death spiral. You build yourself by building others. You build yourself by building others. That is what a manager does. Thank you.